everyone, I'm here today with my January book haul, which consists of 14 books. I said I wasn't buying as many books, and I did. Anyway, they're all on the top of my bookcase, so I need to get those down. Give me a sec. Oh! Ouch! The only problem I now have is that I have to stand back here so that I don't like lose my head. But all the books are way over here. Ah well, we'll figure it out. The first set of books I bought in 2016 or in January, whatever you want to do it like, were second hand in a gorgeous bookshop in the grass market in Edinburgh called Armchair Books. And um, there's lots of second hand ones then, like kind of round the back, tucked away. They've got all these like really old rare editions. I picked up The Dark Wild by Piers Torrey and Peter Pan in Scarlet by Geraldine. Yeah. Geraldine Mc... McCochran? McCochran. I'm going with McCochran. This one is really cool because I don't know if you, I think you can see from the light, there's like a map sort of lightly put on the cover. I don't know what I'm trying to say. And these cost me like £2.50 each, which is a steal for hardbacks. I picked this up because my mum's a huge fan of Peter Pan. Turns out she's actually got a paperback of this book, but J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan, he left the rights to the book to Great Ormond Street Hospital. And I think it was like 2008, at some point, sometime a couple of years ago, they commissioned a sequel and this is it. I haven't actually read Peter Pan. Oh no, I've just, I was about to say I have one, it's fallen over. And this, The Dark Wild by Piers Tordy is actually a sequel. I don't have the first book. The first one's only available in paperback, but I really like the colouring for The Dark Wild in this because the paperback's dark blue, whereas this is my favourite colour. So I bought it, even though it means it won't match the rest of the books when I buy them. If you saw my previous video, which was my Owl Crate unboxing, then you already know what this book is. It's Worlds of Ink and Shadow by Lena Coakley. It's about the Bronte sisters and magic, I'm presuming magic because the Owl Crate box theme was magic. I have to say, I normally I found that Americans tend to have nicer editions of books, especially the hardbacks. So I was really excited to get an American edition thinking, oh, it'll be so pretty. And this, is the American edition. I'm not gonna lie, it is horrible compared to the British one. I much prefer the UK edition. I'll put a photo of it up here. And you can tell me, tell me down below if you prefer the American cover or the British cover. I have a big thing against people on the front of covers, so I definitely prefer the UK edition. But it's the same book, but I can deal with covers. And if I really want to, I can have the nice purple cover. Okay. I got sent two books for review this month from publishers. The first one was from Penguin and that is Disclaimer by Rennie Knight. It's about a girl who, well woman I suppose, she finds a book and she starts reading it and then it turns out to be about her and there's some kind of secret of hers that she didn't realise anyone knew but it's in the book. So I'm very interested in reading this. It's currently Waterstone's thriller of the month for January and one of my colleagues is halfway through and keeps asking me if I've started it yet because she really enjoys it. So. I'm excited to get into this one. The second book I sent for review was from Faber, and this is one I asked for as well, and it's gorgeous. Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Can we just appreciate this cover? It is stunning. Oh, I love it. I've read the synopsis this a few times, but if I'm honest, I can't really tell you what it's about. I don't know, it just, the cover is really pretty, and I wanted the nice pretty book. But it does sound really good. I need to get more into my fantasy and less contemporary, at least. I then picked up The Lie Tree by Frances Harding, which is, it just won the Costa Children's Book Prize. It's about a girl whose dad has died and there's this lie tree, basically you go to the tree and you whisper a lie to it and the bigger the lie, the bigger the truth it reveals. She hopes, like she spreads a lie to the tree or whatever in the hopes of finding out what happened to her dad. And I think like, the thing is, I think the, the lie's got to be believable, like people in the town have to believe it and all this stuff. It just sounds fantastic. I don't know, there's just something about it that's drawing me into it and I'm really, really keen on reading this sometime soon. I'm a huge fan of Carrie Hope Fletcher, you can see her book just at the edge there. I love Les Mis, like I love musical theatre and I love Les Rab and I've seen her, I've definitely seen her as Eponine twice. I might have seen her three times but I can't remember. <laughs> and I was watching her YouTube channel and she likes reading as well, she loves books. And she recommended, she recommended a few, oh I forgot, I actually got one up here that I bought. 
there were a couple books that she recommended and three of which I was like, I need to get these, these sound really good. So the first one I picked up was The List of My Desires by Grégoire Delacour. It's about a woman in France who wins the lottery but doesn't want to cash in the cheque because she doesn't want her life to change. It's a gorgeous little book and I flew through it and I would definitely recommend it to anybody. Carrie also recommended A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Whitcomb. Yeah, Laura Whitcomb. All I can remember from this is about a ghost called Helen. So I was watching the video with Cameron and he found that very funny. But I think this was the book Carrie said she'd left it in her locker at school and she wanted it back and she was quite sad she didn't have it or something like that. You know, I was intrigued by it. The cover's kind of weird. It's a girl in a bath <laughs> in the middle of a forest by the looks of it. But it's, I think this ghost is trapped in school but then there's a boy who can see her or something. I'm not sure. But it's really thin and floppy. <laughs> but it's something I never picked up so... The third book that Carrie recommended that I picked up was Looking for JJ by Anne Cassidy. All I kind of know is that it's about three friends and they go down to the beach but only two come back. I'm not 100% sure what else but this is the 10th anniversary cover and if a book's good enough to get rejacketed because it's a 10th anniversary it must be good. Again it's also quite a short looking one so I'll probably fly through it and if Carrie says it's good I'm going to trust her. I finished work one day and I was having a little wander and I was like I decided that I wanted to try and read more children's fiction. So I wandered over to the 9 to 12 section and the spine of this book caught my eye. It's called A Boy Called Mouse um, by Penny Dolan. I had to pick it up. I, I didn't even give it a second thought. I didn't read the synopsis because Cameron's name is Mouse. It's been like his childhood nickname. So I was just like, I have to get it. The bit at the back just says, a thrilling tale of danger, drama and high wire excitement. And that's all you can really ask for from a kid's book or any book. The most exciting and intimidating book that I've bought this year and probably ever is one I'm, I cannot wait to read it. I don't know when, I don't know how I'll cope, but I need to, I have to, I'm dying to. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is the Norman Denny translation. I have somewhere down here. I will find it for you. When I first got into the musical Les Mis, which was when I first got into musicals, I was on holiday somewhere and for like a pound fifty each I found the Wordsworth Classic edition of Les Mis. This is volume, volume, uh, volume one and volume two. They are translated... Doesn't tell me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. Basically, if I remember rightly, it's something like Warder or Walden, something along those lines. They're like the old translations of Lemas that people used to read all the time, but it's a very literal translation. They've basically taken word for word. So it reads impossibly. It doesn't read nicely at all. I mean, for a start, it has the tiniest font. So I've done some research because this is the Penguin Classic because there's the vintage books which have the red spines. Um, I think they're done by Random House. I really like the cover on that one. I had Cosette with the broom and it had a nice mint colour. But that's a new translation by Julia Rose, I think. I'll put the cover up here. But it's modernised, so things like the Tenardes Inn she references as being a greasy spoon, which is a phrase that they just did not have in France when Victor Hugo was around. So he would never have written anything along those lines. He wouldn't have called it anything like that. And a lot of people have issues with it being modernised and you know, if I'm going to read a classic, I want to read the classic, not the modern version of it. I'd rather read the classic first than that. So I picked up the Denny translation because it's meant to be the best one. This book is over a thousand pages long, which, you know, it's intimidating, but I want to read it. So. I'm going to try, like, I'm trying this year not to force myself to read books I don't want to read. Like, I've got proofs that I have to finish you know, for whatever time and all this and I don't want to have them for too long so the publisher's like, oh you asked for that book and I haven't reviewed it. But at the same time, I don't want to not read something I'm excited to read because, oh it's a thousand pages long and I've got other things to do. Like, I'm going to read because I want to read. On the subject of um, musicals that were originally books and vintage, <laughs> I picked up The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. This cover is fantastic. It's so, I, just, I don't know, I love it. So yeah, this is the novel that Phantom are derived from, Phantom of the Opera the musical derived from. I don't know how similar it is to the musical. Okay, Alexander Tixera de Matos translated this. I don't know how good his translations are, but it can't be worse than the original Amos ones, so. I picked up a, 
a non-fiction book this month because I picked up a few non-fiction actually I've managed to put them all last. Well done Emma. I got No Baggage by Clara Benson which is about this girl who she had a quarter life crisis who had a big mental breakdown and everything and she went on an online dating website I think it was OkCupid found a guy and basically knew him for like dated him for like a month or two and then they decided to go on holiday together but what they done was is they booked a flight from like Texas to Istanbul and then three weeks later a flight from London back home so basically they had they took one pair of clothes which is what they were wearing some money their phones and got on the flight and just wandered around Istanbul found places to stay go other countries everything like that so I love traveling I don't get to do it very often I would love to um and I kind of wonder, like, I, I kind of hope this sparks a bit more wanderlust for me. But it just sounds, it just sounds fascinating to think you just take the clothes on your back and go away for three weeks with nothing booked is insane. So I'm loving it so far. Not too far in, but it is fabulous. The second last book I picked up was kind of spur of the moment. I ordered it, but I've been wanting it for a while. And basically it's... So you want to be musicals by Ruthie Henshaw, which is literally just, you know, how to get into musicals and things like that. Now, I studied musical theatre, but I just wasn't enjoying the college course I was doing. I didn't like the, like, the college was nice, but, you know, and I did enjoy it, but the more I was there, I didn't feel supported in that environment. And I think, you know, you need to be supported there. But I picked this up because it's something I've always wanted to read. And, you know, who knows? Who knows? The final book I picked up was obviously a non-fiction book and it was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert which is about sort of unleashing your creativity and you know allowing yourself to be creative. I done the normal in November and I wrote 50,000 words and then stopped. Um, I was probably about halfway through my novel if not three quarters. When I finished the normal I said to myself I'll take a month break in December and then in the new year I'll start. Now it's the 25th of December, uh, no it's not, it's not Christmas Day. It's the 25th of January, so it's Burns Day. But yesterday I reread my last chapter that I wrote and I wrote about a sentence. And it's just, I don't have the pressure on the normal there to make me write. But I think, you know, I think I'm scared to. I feel like I don't have the right to in a sense. Not that I don't have the right to, but I don't know, I just, I feel like... Like, I find writing very easy, at least I found writing this novel to be easy. If that's because it's not very good, then maybe, but, you know, I feel like I should find it more difficult and I should work harder for it. And I don't feel I should be allowed to write it if I don't find it to be work. So I picked this up in the hopes that it will inspire me to just write my damn novel. <laughs> Whether it just sits on my computer for me or it goes into the world it's published by an author an author i'm tired you know if it gets published you know whatever so i picked this up i have actually some of a dust jacket yeah it's boring so that's all the books that i bought this month it's quite i don't know how long this video was i've been filming for 25 minutes um hopefully i can cut quite a lot out i'll do a January wrap up within the next week or so i'm gonna start well hopefully i'm going to start vlogging a little bit more um, I vlogged when I met Sasha and Ben in Edinburgh and I haven't vlogged since. Well, I tried to vlog when I went to London with Cameron but I chickened out and I don't know why. But I've decided we, we're going down, it'll be two weeks on Thursday that we're going down to London again. So I'm adamant I'm going to vlog some of that. Whether it just be one big long vlog incorporating all four days or if I do like day one, day two, day three, day four, blah blah blah. Also I should probably have mentioned that I've rebranded. I used to be Wonder of Nothing but I decided I didn't, I didn't like that name and I couldn't think of anything bookish. So I decided, let's just use my name. <laughs> so yeah, my channel is now Emma Ferrier. There's like a little watermark down, I don't know which side it'll be on actually. I think it'll be this side? This side, it'll be this side, I don't know. It'll be some side, I think it goes this side. I'm gonna try and keep my thumbnails all the same. <laughs> Cause they were all different, like I've had like three different designs and then the last design I've been using was all different colors. I'm gonna to stick to the same colour from now on, I think. Ah, I'm rambling. Please feel free to comment below. Let me know which books of these you might have read and if you enjoyed them. Again, tell me if you prefer the UK or US cover for Worlds of Ink and Shadow. And make sure to subscribe if you like. I don't know. <laughs> See you guys soon. Bye.